Now, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back for another fine installment. So, here we have one of those things that everybody completely forgot about by now. Probably all of, like, three or four people actually own them. Anybody that decided that they really just had to have one of these. But it's the, uh, it's the RC four-wheel drive Rascal uh, 124. Little montage here to kick off the beginning, and then we're gonna get into some crawl here. Anyway, um, this is originally uh, a chassis by JD Models, and if I'm not mistaken, it was made in Germany. And if I could kind of confirm just basically how, like, all the machined parts and stuff like that, and the gearing and everything involved, and just the axles and the gearbox and stuff like that, it's it's definitely considerably beyond anything else that you might find with um, you know some of the stuff that's currently on the market. Um, anyway, these were made, I think they were released like 2017, 2018, um, and I recall seeing them like right when I first got into SCX 24s like three years ago, and thought they were way out of my price range, and you know, just didn't know anything about them, decided not to take a chance, you know, I just felt like I could get more of a crawler out of an SCX 24, so anyway, a few years later, one of these popped up on Facebook Marketplace, and the thing was in an absolute mint condition, I think it's been run outside maybe once. Um, the servo is a little glitchy in this, I'm running it on 3S and I think it's kind of a combo of one that's a really heavy truck at like one pound, ten ounces, three grams, um, being powered by a tiny little N20 motor. And so I think it points, um, while the motor runs awesome on 3S, I think the servo is just a little underpowered. Um, and so I did some searching and there's only just a few options out there to upgrade that. So uh, I have one run order from Banggood as well as like uh, the same one that's in there for the stock uh, as well, uh, currently on order. So a backup stock servo and then an upgrade on the way. And uh, kind of thinking about going with the Fury Tech Springtail in this, the brushless system that uh, people were running in the RC four wheel drive, uh, 124 Mojave's, the little guys. Um, but this is a really heavy truck, and for what it's doing, for the motor that's in it, I'm super impressed. Uh, it runs, I think, if I'm not mistaken, at like a 100 to 1 ratio at the transmission, and then these are 4 to 1 ratio axles. So, technically speaking, for every 400 RPMs the motor makes, then you're seeing 1 RPM at the wheel. Um, so that's a lot of what you're hearing for the gearing noise and stuff like that with this. Obviously it's slowed down to 25% just because that's my style of video, um, but at full, at full volume and at full speed, this thing just like kind of hums and winds right along with, with all kinds of gear noise. Um, I spent a crazy amount of time working on the suspension on this uh, from like Thursday, I think it showed up Thursday or Friday, I can't remember, but spent probably about a solid like two days um, getting everything dialed in. I took the factory shocks off and decided to run telescoping shocks that I had kicking around. And then if you see the, the up front, you have the pan hard um, and the drag link are both attached on the same side. When they show up from the factory, the pan hard is actually attached on the other side, so it makes an X on the front. Uh, and that completely limits how the front suspension uh, was able to work. So it took me a couple days to figure out, wait, why not try and switch this mount and switch everything over to the other side? So I did, and it fixed everything really about how the steering was working. I no longer have any uh, body roll unnecessary like body movement, suspension flex or anything like that when it turns side to side. Everything just goes right to the tires when it's supposed to. Um, so this segment is actually kind of like later in the evening yesterday where I kind of was a little bit more used to how this thing drives. It likes to have you kind of stay steadily on the throttle and not let up. And you don't really want to gun it because it will run into positions where it will stall itself out. But if you just stay nice and low and steady, it'll pretty much motor over just about everything you want it to go over. Um, it took me a little bit to learn how to drive it. And there's still a couple of spots, you know, like I said, the, the servo's really glitchy still. Uh, and, you know, that'll be what it is for a while. I think I, these are like 30 amp ESCs, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this is actually one that you can do channel mixing and run dual output, so it has like a yellow lead for uh, running like from MOA, so I had an extra one of these around. And it's actually a really smooth uh, startup and everything, so it's running Fly Sky Radio on it. Now this segment is actually one that I kind of started off with that was newer than the one that you just saw. Uh, not really quite fully used 
to how to drive it just yet in this, but this is where I was really learning what these what this thing's kind of capable of. <sighs> what else can I say about the suspension on this? Um, it was a long road to get it to this. I tried like three different springs uh, for flex rate and stuff like that, and then. I had these shocks set up on one of my rock rigs and I had some really tiny springs set up inside for kind of like bump coils. And those I discovered were really limiting, uh, just with just a lot of friction, uh, just causing some binding and stuff like that. So I took those out and it really seemed to loosen up the flex of this truck a lot. And then uh, what else? I just wanted to make sure that everything was lubricated and running well. That's another thing I could mention too. With this thing being such a finely geared machine, um, it needed to be lubricated and uh, it run, you know. The mesh really just needed to break in. It was really binding quite a bit right when I first got it. And that was partly in because, partly because they had a, a pan hard bar out back, which was totally unnecessary. And then the pan hard bar up front was mounted on the wrong side. So basically everything was fighting each other and then you're getting a lot of binding with the drive shafts and stuff like that. So uh, it just took setting it up properly and then breaking it in. And then as you'll see here, uh, I do end up rolling it. <laughs> uh, I've rolled this thing actually quite a bit and it is, you know, it's a heavy rig. It weighs almost two pounds. It's, it's what, six ounces shy of two pounds. So um, yeah, not bad. Actually, I think it's, what is it? Less. So it's like three ounces, one pound, 10 pound, one, one pound, 10 ounces, three grams. So yeah, it is. It's about, about six ounces shy. Uh, so I've, since I've been back at my parents' place now, um, I've had a little chance to kind of go through and weed this little section and kind of make a little, just a couple of paths. And I really like this little spot because it gives me a good, a good field of view, good angle without anything behind it. Not too much anyway. And then uh, I think it's just a good scale spot for this truck. It seems to drive really well. It gets diff hung coming up, but I think it's just kind of, again, I think this was at the point where I was just learning what this thing is, you know, going to do and what it's not going to do. Just trying to take it easy. Not burn up the motor within like the first two, two times out. So one of the things that uh, I do want to mention is that if you do find one of these and you get one, these come with a proprietary um, wheel setup on them basically, but they have pins they're set up to be able to accept seven millimeter hex. Um, so you just need to completely disassemble the wheel and then pop that inner brake drum off. Uh, so it is like six lug nuts and then you undo the, the uh, four millimeter interior nut, internal nut, excuse me, and then uh, pop, pop that whole thing off and then that reveals a pin. Um, this quickly became my one of my favorite lines just because it Kind of reminds me of home and uh yeah just that part where it breaks right up over well and all of these rocks are from vermont including that vermont greenstone but these are just various pieces of things that i've picked up and brought back to to my place and i figured i'd bring, bring some of vermont to uh, illinois with me and i'm glad i did this rock really is much, much different than anything that my parents have, like, around the house. There's some, a couple similar pieces, but nothing, anything like it at all. And there's actually a few, few pieces of rock I've seen around town that make me want to get out and do an urban crawl session. So, if you like this video and you want to see more of this thing, hit that like and subscribe. You're going to see a lot more of this truck, I think, this summer. Uh, hopefully I can keep it running right. Thanks for watching. Take it easy out there, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. All right. Peace.